Hey, well, to start off, can you introduce yourself to our site visitors? Oh, yeah. <laughs> My name is Tech Nine. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm a co owner of Strange Music. It's awesome. Well, can you know, I've had a chance to check out uh, Strange Elation, the new collaborations oh, yeah, yeah. album, and I, I just think it's absolutely brilliant. You know, <laughs> how, how excited are you to get this out and in the hands? I mean, how's the feedback been? I mean, what I'm reading so far seems really positive. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it leaked like six weeks out, so it's <laughs> like. We're getting all positive yeah. reviews, you know what I mean? Um, you got some people that are waiting to May 6th, which is cool, you know what I mean? Um, but when you're sought after, it's a blessing. And when your stuff leaks because you have fans in manufacturing, it's flattering, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, a pain in the butt because you want to surprise your fans but um yeah i was gonna say how annoying is yeah, that yeah, one yeah. That, you know i mean it's gotta be like damn really you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah but you know it could be the latter it could be nobody's checking for it you know what i mean and that's not the case but um a lot of people are um responding to a lot of the songs so that's all i want to do is spread good music to people you know what i mean and give them something they can listen to over and over man and uh, i think i have one and this is the most um i've signed on a project you know on uh, pre-orders um i signed nine thousand. Oh my god yeah my shoulders <laughs> i was gonna say you got a cramp yet <laughs> oh my god it started hurting yesterday i'm like oh no oh no sorry that's okay oh, i'm so sorry stuff <laughs> okay. grass always leaves it open i'm like come on dude you know i don't like that open okay <laughs> sorry real tv would take nine out yeah that's true so can you take me in the recording process, you know, maybe for one or two tracks in particular on the new album and tell me what the mindset was like when putting them together? Um, I have, I'm blessed to have a producer like Seven because he'll just ask me what am I thinking, you know what I'm saying? And um, I'll call him, I'll show you really quick. <laughs> I'll show you. It's okay. funny, I was just doing this the other day. This is a song on Strange Elation. Who did I send it to last? Okay. Vic. It's a song on Strange Elation. And I wanted... I, I dream beats and ideas, you know? And um, I'll send it to Seven. And he'll make the beat. You know what I mean? Um... This is the one that I, um... It's amazing that you have that chemistry to be totally. able to just have that vision and then have it, you know, this is what I want, and then have it come out, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, man. not a lot of artists, ha you know, it's like, oh, that's not right, or that's not exactly what I was thinking. So, so this is what, um, I would send Seven when I dream a beat, and then he'll make it. Come on, you bloody swagger. <laughs> Here you go. Drink this. So did you just wake up and that's like, Yes, yes. Oh my I, God. I put it in my recorder, you know. So that's that. That's me sending it to seven. Like I need to beat like this. But I heard one of my artists, Godimus, saying the words. So I sent this to Godimus. As soon as I got the words, I woke up with that beat in my head. I put it in my recorder and then I later on that day I wrote the words to it. And um I sent this to Godimus. Come on. <laughs> I woke up with that in my head this morning. I hear your voice saying it. I want to do a song called Which One? We're talking about multiple, multiple personalities we have and shit. And it'd be a dope and fun song and shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, which one? Fucking with pick one, you know what I'm saying? You label this fiction. I looked in there is none. Like this shit is real. It ain't no gimmick. You know what I'm saying? We actually have multiple personalities. One is laid back. One wants to party. One wants to kill you. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck. All right, in a minute, tech nine, get back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. That's the recording process. <laughs> technology blows my mind though yeah of just you know of how easy of a time we have to do that now totally you know man. what i mean before it wasn't late you know i mean you've yeah. obviously witnessed those changes totally happen. man i mean 
we've always, you know, been fans of Radio Shack, you know, because I was always around DJs. So before you, we had the phones to put it in, you know what I'm saying? We would go buy little dictaphone recorders. Yeah. Like those little things that get, get bigger and they get smaller, you know what I mean? It's like we always had a way to record things, you know what I mean? So when the dictaphones got smaller, it was easier to put in your pocket and just now you have recorders on your phone and you get an idea you don't lose anything no nothing you know what i mean and um because pitch is everything with me so when i'm dreaming of like which one you would pick one you know it's going up right there it could easily be i could lose it if i don't record it be like which one when it'd be a different yeah. pitch you know what i mean it won't be exciting so it's very important to me with the recording process it's like me dreaming it recording it sending it to seven you know what i'm saying i don't do all the beats like that but you you know what I'm saying? Some of the ideas yeah. I get, you know, I send to him and he'll create them. And when you hear the actual song, it's exactly what I did. You know what I mean? It's so crazy. Oh, that, that's definitely. I mean, how much, I mean, lyrical style for you, how much practice do you have to oh, put in goodness. for that? Practice makes perfect, especially being me, um, technician number one, you know. Um, it's um, a technician is one that loves the technical style of rhyme, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I do have. And it takes a lot of practice. You know, I had to learn over the years that with my flow, it's not pushing hard <laughs> off the roof of your mouth. It's letting your tongue be loose, you know. Everybody wanna be you know, it's like everybody wanna be done with a nigga when we get a whiff of the money, taking the taking it from it, they get a penny club, giving the love, throwing up with a little liquor and butt. You know, I, I couldn't do, I couldn't I couldn't do that like really pushing hard off the yeah. roof of my mouth, you know what I'm saying? Some of the people appointed to give an opinion and never do get it, I want you to come on and got my Jimmy and die, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it has to be free to hit the bottom and the top of, you know what I'm saying, your mouth, you know? And that took years in the shower practicing. <laughs> oh no, I can't say it like that. How can I do that? No, I can't do it when I push hard like that. Oh, I realized that I, when I used to stay with Chris Calico, I used to be in the shower in the morning getting ready working on that you know what I mean trying to loosen my tongue up to get all those words out and clearly you know flowing uh, like water you know I couldn't even imagine like yeah, I really it's couldn't crazy. <laughs> and I got to do that every night you know perfectly <laughs> a lot of pressure I can imagine does that how does that ever get to you yes all the time because all my fans they know all the words <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I can stop and just go, hey, you know what I'm saying? I have to say that every night. So, I mean, speaking of even the live shows and and your writing process, I mean, what I find so refreshing is the honesty, mm -hmm. like, in your music. And, you know, a lot of, is it hard for you as an artist to, you know, you're reliving these emotions that you were feeling, you yeah. know, when you were writing it each and every night when you're performing? I mean, you may or may, may not be feeling that way at the same time, but you're still, like, reliving those emotions. Um... When I did KOD in 2009, I had no idea that I had all those dark stories to tell that were real, you know. Mm -hmm. Scared the hell out of me, man. And it took me down in a deep hole, and I tried my best to get up out of it after that album and try to do this light, bright album called um, The Gates Mix Played, you know what I'm saying? Because it scared me, you know what I mean? And my fans didn't understand. I'm like, dude, if I stay in that pit, I'm gonna die, you know what yeah. I'm saying? This, this liberate me it was... Uh, a tattoo I got a long time ago, you know what I'm saying, when I wanted to die, you know what I'm saying, and now it's gotten so good since then, you know, it's a wonderful tattoo now, you know what I mean, it's, it's, I was asking the Lord to liberate me from this place, I yeah. free me from this place, nobody understands, you know, but, uh, you know, when you write that kind of stuff, man, you're, like, people get into character, but the funny thing about Tech 9 is that it's my life, so it's not a character, it's just me, you know what I'm saying, I don't have to portray this thing, you know what I mean? And then I'm normal after that. You know what I'm saying? It's a normal guy within me, yeah. but it's an abnormal thought process. And that's like constant battle. You know what I'm saying? Evil brain, angel heart. Oh my God, it's therapeutic. <laughs> Thank God that I have that canvas to put it out and get it out of me. It is my therapy. That's why I did that, um, that EP called Therapy with Ross Robinson. Yeah. I needed it. I needed it. Even though it was only six, seven songs, I wrote all those songs on Venice Beach at his place right there on Venice Beach. 
You know what I mean? Just wrote them right there. You know what I mean? And how did that come about? Like, how did the idea for that come about? Um, we had a mutual friend that uh, hooked us up. Ross Robinson uh, knew a guy by the name of Shawnee, and we were working with Shawnee through Dave Weiner, our v VP out in the West. And um, they put two crazy people together, and uh, we came with it. You know, we, therapy came forth, and I wouldn't mind doing another session with him. You that would be saying? amazing. Yeah, man. You know, I'd, I'd want to do a therapy album with him. I'm, I'm not no more EPs. You know what I'm saying? It's like I want to do an album with Ross. You know what I'm saying? Therapy, the album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how much therapy I need. <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, what I love so much is that you're not afraid to experiment with genres and no, feel no. like you have to be boxed in somewhere. I hate genres. Like Me it's too. funny to come as a journalist because I feel like the music media wants us to box an artist yeah. into one particular thing or another, and yeah. I can't stand to do that. I like, want to allow myself to be caged. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've, I've never caged as a kid. You know when it came to music choices because my family were were. Eccentric or eclectic or whatever when it came to music um, and Yeah, eccentric I think it is um, and We had rock and roll we had gospel we had R&B we had blues we had jazz we had everything you know and um, I thank them for that because it shows in what I do You know what I mean? I'm not the norm and that's why strange music You know what I mean? It's perfect for me but, I mean, it's so refreshing to fans for something different and to not feel trapped in one thing. I mean, it's okay to like rap or hip-hop and like rock and metal yeah. at the same time. And sometimes, like, you know, they'll be like, oh, no, 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 the Craig is like, you can't do that. Like, it's got to be one or the other, and it drives me crazy. <laughs> I, was, I was reading um, at 5 o'clock this morning before I went to sleep. <laughs> um, I was reading um, Instagram posts, and they were so nice. Everybody was saying all nice things, man. There was one guy that says, please never do another record like Therapy, man. That's just, it was just so bad. But it's people that don't like rock and roll. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? It's just like rap. He's like, your Something Else album was killer. We don't like Therapy. I'm like, how dare you say that in front of everybody? You know what I'm saying? You just let everybody know that you're just on this one but thing. there's always one. Yeah, like, it's always one. I feel one. like there's like, always one. I'm like, but know? they have their choice, whatever they want. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And you have the choice to like whatever you like. And some people, he said, he said, he also said he went by every song. I'm like, he don't even know the gems that he missed because yeah. of the rock music. You, you got I mean? two like taking on yeah, just that yeah, without just bothering like, to listen. Music, yeah. They hear it start off like, "Are you ready for it?" They're like, "Oh hell no!" Yeah. You know, and then, you know, I always had this. Um, they stigmatized me <coughs> years ago. <coughs> Said I was a devil worshiper. So somebody hear me yelling like that, I'm like, "Oh no, I get it. Can't can't hear that." You know, <laughs> you know. But we was just talking about it. it was some really good songs on therapy, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if people can't get past the rock and roll, I was like, "I'm sorry for them." You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Some people are just in one spot and they never left their hood, so I wouldn't expect them to get that. Well, and I ain't just talking about black folk. I'm talking about all folk. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to hear that Fragile is getting some radio play now, and I think that you make a lot of excellent points on commentary <laughs> about yeah. the industry yeah. and what it means when an artist hears that criticism. Yeah, and, man. I mean, it's great. I mean, I feel like it took a little while to get on the radio, yeah, but like, it it's, it's good that it's there now. <laughs> oh, man, it's a victory for me, man, because it's a song of that that has that kind of content on the radio and that's right. the one they're playing over and over and over. I'm like, wow, I don't have to conform. And I knew I wasn't gonna conform, right. you know what I'm saying? To do anything for anybody outside of what I feel, you know? And um, it's a victory because it's real emotion on the radio and it's a wonderful tune and everything about it is wonderful. So it has to be played and Kendrick Lamar killed it. And um, Tech Nine murdered it, so it's supposed to be played. You know what I mean? And people are on Instagram and Twitter. I uh, I used to like you, but now you have fragile on the radio. You sold out. I'm like, you don't know what victory. 
that is. We've been on FTI since 2002. You know, it's an F the industry, and um... I mean, I have to wonder if they listen to the lyrics before making a comment like that. No, man, they don't, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, I miss going so fast. Can't stand the way they slam today's gifted effing incredible. Get fan the way with grands to pay. This gem will lay scripted, deaf and impeccable. You know what I'm saying? It's like, they get so caught up in the beat and the flow, you know, they just don't understand. Put them words together, man, they're so powerful. You know what I mean? If you take the time to really put it together, you know what I mean? It's, I say a lot of stuff and I slow it down at the end. Yeah. It's real. I'm mad. Clueless when you scribble on your pad. How you gonna criticize with a chisel in your nads? Sizzling your ad. You know what I'm saying? Like burning what you wrote. You don't really get why I'm so pissed. Understand this. I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. You know. Everybody knows that line. You know. So it's real music on the radio being played. That's a victory for strangers. Right. Well, I mean, that's a victory for music And it doesn't music sound like overall. anything on the radio. I mean, it's truly a victory for music totally, overall man. because there is so much out there that just is crap. <laughs> like, you know, it's not real. It's over-processed. It's this, yeah. that, you know, and like half of these people don't know what they're talking about. They've never lived <laughs> it. It's, it is ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. It gets that way, man. You know what I'm saying? But as long as I keep mine pure and I don't stray of the path, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? This is me until the last day of the earth. So, I mean, what is fascinating to me during a writing process is an artist's ability to tell a whole story and evoke an emotion in a listener in like a mm -hmm. three to four minute time period. I mean, that's totally. about what you have. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you feel about that? Like, is, do you ever have things that kind of stretch out too long or you break apart, you know? It's, oh, no, no, no. You just gotta know how to cram that story and tell that story. <laughs> within 16 to 20 or 24 bars, you know what I mean, each verse. Um, I do it all the time, the art of storytelling, man, you know, if you're an MC, you should be able to tell a story and have it match up with right. dates and everything. You have to do research and make sure everything is right when you're writing, because people are like, hold on, that didn't, that didn't match up, those dates didn't match up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you always have to be mindful of you get them engaged in the story by the first thing you say. You know what I'm saying? And you tell more of the story in the middle and you have to close it with a bang like, oh man, really? You know, on a song I tell stories on on something else is I'm not a saint. And that last line, talking about being molested by my seventh grade teacher and Mrs. And then I'm like, they're like, what? What did he say? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you end it with a bang. It's just how you write, you know, but you have to be able to say it in rhyme form, which is hard to do. But if you, if MCing is what you say you truly do, you'll be able to do it. We're probably one of the busiest guys that mm -hmm. is, you know, with being out on the road so much, hanging in the studio with all the releases and everything. And, you know, can you talk about your work ethic and, and what goes into that and, you know, why it's so important? Um, it's important because we haven't gotten to the level that we've strived for yet. Yes, we are in a wonderful place and um, blessed to be where we are right now, you know what I'm saying, the level, but me and Travis, our expectation is higher than this. World domination takes a little bit of time. <laughs> and that's what we're, we've always strived for. We're getting there. I'm not there yet. So the work ethic is just me just steadily pushing, steadily trying to show out because new fans are coming in every day. Yeah. So I'm, I steadily have to keep my game tight and, you know, their new ears are listening every day. I'm like, ah, oh, I heard about him. Nope. But they hear like, whoa, that's my first song. People come up and say, man, I just heard just music for the for the first time last week and now I heard that song with you and Serge Tonkin of System of a Down and I'm a fan. I'm like, mmm, I'm glad that got you, brother. I didn't know about everything else, you know. And they slowly find out, you know. It's wonderful. Absolutely. It's... I just keep pushing. That's my work ethic. So, and how has the uprise of social media been a tool for you? Like, I mean, I'm, you've obviously witnessed this is the way that, you know, fans and... Yeah, I was there. Are... I was there, you know, saying, um when there was not, mm -hmm. in the studio and everything, when there was not a lot of technology. Right, I mean, that's you know like what we were saying, saying earlier. I mean, I don't even know like, make a how mistake, things... Make a mistake in the studio, you have to splice the tape and 
do it again, you know what I mean? And cut and paste and stuff, you know what I mean? With technology now, you know what I'm saying? It makes everything so easy. It makes us lazy, but, you know, it's convenient. You know, um, it, it helps young artists because they can put something up on YouTube and get a million views and get a record deal, you know what I'm saying? Or multi-million views, you know? Um, it works for us. We've always said no matter where music is being played, we will be there. You know, um, if it's in a microchip you put in your shoe, you know, we'll be right there with the music and you can feel the vibration of the beat coming through your leg. I don't know. You know, we'll be right there. You know what I'm saying? So thank God for technology because the people that weren't getting my music overseas started getting it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Before we started distributing over there, you know, that's how they got it. Like, oh, I have to get this off of, you know, uh, YouTube or Facebook or, oh my God, you know, I just heard this on YouTube, you know what I mean? And you got people from Africa, and I've never been there, saying, you're a God here, please get here, you know what I'm saying? It's because of technology and the like, internet. Do you feel like some of the Shroud of Mystery has gotten lifted, though? around music sometimes. the what like the shroud of mystery that used to be around artists do you feel like that's got oh, lifted like, a little like, bit like you talking about like um privacy yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah man oh yeah man we don't have it anymore you know what i'm saying but i'm not the kind of guy that tweets and like oh, okay i'm about to get in the shower right, right. okay i'm putting on my shoes okay i got a picture um i'm eating my breakfast you know what i'm saying every once in a while i might put something up but uh you know, my people wish I would do it more, but I need some time away from the public eye. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm in it all the time. So, you know, I think ever since MySpace, we've been invaded. <laughs> oh, yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? You can't yeah. even walk in a restaurant with somebody. If you have three girlfriends, you can't have it anymore. You're like, I saw a picture with you and her, and you say you don't talk to her no more. You're like, damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that have to be cut out, like around MySpace, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> then it starts getting worse and worse, you know what I'm saying? With the camera phones and everything. And it does, like people trying to be slick about yeah, it. Yeah, they do me like that all the time. People are taking pictures of like, technology is right next to me. Like, don't paparazzi me. Come take a picture with me. Don't paparazzi me. I hate to be paparazzi. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm walking down the street and people are driving by, like, I'm like, don't. You can't say nothing to them because they in their they're car. In the car they're, yeah. they're at the light and they see it's you and they're like, oh my goodness. And just recording me, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Don't do me like that. But they can't they can't help it because they see somebody famous that they like, you know, they're like, Oh my goodness, I got Tech Nine walking. It's know? like an addiction too. I mean a lot of it it's like, you know, the phones have become the electronic handcuff yeah. that's with us yeah. like all the time. Don't, so. don't get don't don't let the Google glasses come out. <laughs> The Google They're Glasses, here. They're yeah, here. I mean, to, to, to where the people are buying them, you know what I mean? I just look at you in the eye and like, doo -doo -doo -doo, tell me who you are. I'm like, oh my God, nobody's going to go outside ever again but if they're felon or if they did, did bad things. Police are going to have them first, like, ah, oh, come here. <laughs> what are you doing yeah, out you're here? Done. Yeah, you're supposed to be in rehab right now, you know, like, what? No. Google Glasses? Just look at somebody and... His name is Aaron Dante J. She was born November so and so and so and so. He has um, psycho tendencies. Like, oh my God, okay, we're gonna watch him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know, it's, it's gonna get worse. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. The glasses. That's the that's the hilt right there. That's the pinnacle right there. there is. Throw on some glasses and just be able to read everything. I like. If I, I still think wanted to play with them. I'm guilty of, course, of wanting to play with them. Of course, you want to. You, you see a chick walking down the street. It's not fair. You get her name, hey, Sabrina. What? <laughs> you don't know me. I know, but you, 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 it won't be. How do you know my name? I like I got Google yeah. glasses on, man. <laughs> what you mean? It just told me how old you are. I know your whole life story. That takes the fun out of the, the thrill of the thrill of the chase. It does. What's your name? <laughs> I don't, you don't need to ask you what your name is no more in the club. I can just throw in my Google Glass like, no more like that one right there. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, <laughs> Francesca. <laughs> oh man, let's say she's 17. What's she doing in the club? <laughs> it's the hormones and the food that got her like, ah, oh, okay. Nope, no Francesca tonight. 
you know? Yeah, I bet. Let's take that whole what's your name, what's your sign, like right, exactly. right now. Exactly. <laughs> Why would somebody want to do that? You know what I'm saying? Just mess up that whole thing. So therefore, women are not going to talk to anybody on the street no more because you already know. Oh, she has herpes. Okay, damn, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Will Google Glasses tell you that? Like, you know? <laughs> Zanae's victim. Like, damn. You know what I'm saying? about Google Glass and things that are, are pop culture trends. Is there anything that angers or fascinates you the most about what's currently going on in pop culture? Uh, I'm a hippie. I usually have on a bracelet that says ha happy as fuck. I just haven't taken a shower yet. You know? um, not too many things anger me. You know what I mean? The only thing that twists my nipple is um, trying to get people to understand that I am one of the best to release, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of doors haven't opened, you know what I'm saying? For late night TV and, you know, award shows and stuff like that that I murder, you know? Um, a lot of those things haven't came forth. I don't think because I'm different, uh, I don't know. You know Do you feel saying? like they're on their way to... Possibly. To I mean, it's no way around it. Yeah. I'm a force that won't go away. There's no way around it. You know what I mean? So, I'm going to break through no matter what. You know what I'm saying? It's coming. I will not back off. If you had to choose something that would be like one of the most misunderstood things about you, what would that be? Uh, that I'm a devil worshiper when I was raised in the church. and face paint on a black man does not mean devil worshiper, you know? It just means weird. It's a shame that people <laughs> are still stuck on that, too. They're because... getting off of it. They're getting off of it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're getting off of it. I'm sorry. They're getting off of it, you know? It's like the the flow is so undeniable that they like, this couldn't be the same devil dude. Yeah. Not the devil dude, though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's so the God it guy. It wasn't. <laughs> 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 you know. So when this tour wraps up, what are the plans for you after that? I know there's a lot of days this takes you like through summer, right? Like well, midsummer. When this tour lets up it's gonna take me to another tour in Canada, then after that another tour in Europe, and then after that another uh little run in um um Australia, New Zealand and maybe Hawaii for the first time that I've been yeah. trying to do for a long time. So we gone, man. Is there any place else that you'd like to go that you haven't been to? Everywhere. Yet? I'm talking about <laughs> world domination. I haven't been to I haven't been to Dubai. I haven't been to Africa. Yeah. I haven't been to um Brazil. I haven't been to Budapest. I haven't been to a lot of places. You know, Japan or China. I've never done it. You know, there's so many places that we have to touch. We haven't tapped it. Our music has. Mm -hmm. But we haven't went to these places, you know what I mean? And it's because the the promoters don't know. So it's my job to get even more bigger and humongous that it's undeniable. They have to call, you know what I'm saying? So I'm doing my job. Absolutely. You know? Well, I want to thank you so much for taking a few minutes to speak with me today. I really thank appreciate you. Thank it. You. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. It was really relaxing.